Porn Stars or People Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Frigolette. I'm here with Valentina Mia. Hi. Thank you for doing this. I'm I appreciate you. Here. Thank you for having um, me. This is, my, this is my first AVN. How many have you been to these? Have you? Uh, do you do these a lot? This is do my you, first AVN. Do you go here, bro? <laughs> do I go here? <laughs> this is my first AVN as well. It's okay, very cool. What do you? What did? You, what have you taken? What's the takeaway? Um. Well, the takeaway is to be very social and to make the most out of everything. Because okay. Because you know you're not guaranteed to be here every year, and just to be able to. You're not also not guaranteed to be able to see all these people all in one, you know, close proximity. You right. Have the opportunity to meet so many legends. Right. I was thinking about this. I'm a comedian. I don't know uh, if if you have my background, uh, but uh, we don't have this. We like we have every night hanging out at the club doing the thing, but we don't have like get everybody do a thing, take over a hotel and just be fucking, uh, you know, just be morons. No yeah. offense. But, <laughs> like, you know, so it's, it's just an interesting thing. I, like, I wonder what is the the total experiences because it seems like you guys only really get i mean because you you know you're not working on on massive scales because it's you know scenes generally are a couple people here and there um so you get like four or five events yeah to just have everybody to have everybody all and it's nuts place. and it know? is nuts yes and then um I, I get to meet a lot of fans here too so this right. is my first opportunity to be able to do that because i don't have any other venue other than these conventions to right be able to do that it's a big part of this so, business yeah. yeah yeah and i had some lengthy conversations with them some that have been telling me they've been voting for me every day no shit like that. Yeah. oh that's great yeah I, d I do find that I found this interesting and um, what word do I want? Um, not just supportive, but uh, I found it uh, really intriguing that in this type of award show, people can can be voted in to mm -hmm. some of the awards and then and then that gives them sort of the credibility that they need and, and, and yep. deserve, exactly. um, which is which is really really nice mm -hmm. democratic that's always yeah. nice. <laughs> democratic sure yeah, yeah yeah well it's a it's a hot word these days isn't it there's it was a true true democracy where it exists <laughs> and whether it does or doesn't but apparently it exists here at avn um so that's cool well, okay, hopefully so true democracy doesn't exist because then you tend to be led by your inferiors as plato said <laughs> the <laughs> average person isn't too bright she just dropped some plano on me <laughs> uh, i agree with everything that you're saying yes uh yeah is it, and the and and human nature and the ability of people to be herded um mm -hmm. and you know, and i use human as a, as a rough thing because I'm, I'm really starting to get to get to the viewpoint that um the fact that we think that we're superior because we're humans is, yeah. is, is, is our whole problem. Yes, the anthropocentric view of the it, world. Yeah, if we can just go, look, we're fucking animals. Yes, we are. <laughs> then I think we can like we can live by some of the rules of other societies that mm -hmm. are working. Yep. Um, Be more aware of our primitive instincts. Like, yes. you know, we have we work off we operate off of just like fear basically yes <laughs> no, but fear we operate survival, like and survival just, right and that just becomes more convoluted in our way of expressing those right. things right well we've also made up a bunch of stuff that's not real to mm -hmm. to try and control those things yes. and we've been made to uh believe things that aren't real to control those things i i have this i have this vague theory that uh, uh living in a world with no rules actually uh, a clear guideline set of guidelines becomes uh the the ruling principles mm -hmm. and that morality actually will exist in that environment oh you think so i do i think i think if you live in a world where there are no laws against murdering people then the stakes to murder someone actually grow they do because <laughs> because right now if i murder you then everybody that knows you're just going to go well, let's let's get him in front of the law whereas in that society with no rules if i murder you then everybody who knows you go you can't murder her and they just murder me yeah and while like i'm murdering you society then I can get murdered by you. There's like way more chances that I'm going to eventually be killed yeah. by just being a dick than there are in the current situation. So that's, this is vague. I was actually talking vague. about this that earlier. I like that idea of, uh, like I was thinking before, I think it was like yesterday actually I was talking about this and I was um, talking about how it would be so cool if we didn't have any laws or anything. Yes. It would truly be survival of the fittest. Yes. <laughs> it wouldn't even have to be survival of the fittest because because for some reason I think humanity would prevail and I think we would, we put, our, we would put ourselves in a position where we are not just going to let 
chaos uh, take over. We, it's sort of like it becomes more order. Uh, you know, it might it might turn back into sort of like tribing up and all these sorts of things. Yeah. But I was in South Africa and I found that there are people um, that are I mean, but there, there's 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 massive poverty and there will always be crime with poverty. But there are people that are that are robbing people. Mm -hmm. And the response now to people that that are not in poverty is to just basically let it happen. And not even to them. They're letting it happen to other people. I witnessed someone letting people get rob each other? robbed and no one even tried to stop it. Wow. Well, you'd be surprised it happens here, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People look the other way because they think someone else is going to call the police or someone else is going to deal with right. the problem. Right. Yeah. We think somebody else is going to think instead we're going to put our phones on and, and, mm. and, and try to get followers off yeah, of the YouTube strand. Yeah. I saw someone, I think, like died on a Snapchat. No like this, shit. This dude grabbed him, pushed him in the air, and then like slammed him down and it seemed like his neck broke. Yeah. And he fell into the ground and his body was completely he still. He wasn't he got knocked out. And yeah. everyone was like, ooh, oh, oh. Oh, world star, like, yeah, world, world star. star. Like, this person's like probably dead. No, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, this guy he he, he, won't be able to walk anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, so I, I do, I do feel that that, that, that could be, bo I mean, we're so far beyond that. So it's fun to theorize, but. We'll never, you know, we'll never get, to, we'll never Actually get to play with there. that theory. I think yeah. that that would, I think that that sort of like state of war sort of place, I think that eventually we'd come into having leadership. I think that that's. So then we get back to the ex the same yeah. place that we're at. We had just developed another social contract. And yeah. We, go. we had to create our own government because we want to be able to secure our liberties that we have because they're so precious. Right. Yeah. And you got to have right. some sort of arbiter to make sure people don't right. violate those rights. Yes, well, may, well, for the other reason, because what you said that, uh, uh, what was what was Plato's exact quote? Um, if in a democracy you're led by your inferior, you're ruled by your inferiors. Inferiors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the yeah, so there will be that because there are. I mean, we we get it. There are people that just don't want to have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. That's a sad reality. Yeah, and then also just the majority of the. If you go off the majority of the people, the majority person, like the the app, the majority is just like the average, and the average is. <laughs> not um, necessarily the most capable or the best fit for the position. That's I would say the average democracy. is just not convicted uh, in the way that, that the, the outliers are, right? So it's like you, in the middle, you just don't feel that strongly about anything mm -hmm. because it's easier to just sort of put your head down and, and, and go through the process. So, And there's only going to be those couple people that are like, no, 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 this is not the fucking way. Yeah. And so, yeah. so I That's guess all like how politics works here in America. You have for sure. People who well, not just in America. <laughs> well, I haven't been to other, I mean, I haven't lived in other countries. Yeah. So. I can just speak for, for sure, my sure, own. and and yet that's how I feel like it, it is here. It's just like it's the few people who care about doing things get those things done one way yeah. or another. And the well, they try. Sleeps. <laughs> well, it depends, right? Because so then you still run into the same problem, right? So you have you have two sides. You have two convicted sides. Mm -hmm. You have a side that's that's for and a side that it's against, and and it does it does come down to to the drive and the power and all the things of of who gets who gets swallowed and who uh, prevails. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a, it's sometimes it's just a matter of time. Uh, with certain policies as as to who's going to be who's going to prevail and or, or the fact or how long it takes to get to the what what is considered just mm -hmm. um so what what are you so what are your causes then what are you My causes, what are you convicted about um i am very convicted about transgender issues okay. because you know being transgender yeah. that really hits home for me sure. and i think now is especially the time to um, initiate those conversations yes. and also um, be a part of those conversations yeah. in the first place whenever people are over here asking me questions about, you know, my gender identity and my sexuality and um, whether or not I get the surgeries or whatever. Right. These sorts of questions that um, people may not even be concerned, um, may not even be aware of whether these questions are even appropriate right. in the first place. Um, and then also even just how to pose those questions. And I right. think that... Um, that's an important thing for me, and I've actually done some volunteer work, and I've um, I was actually a organizer for a, a for Equality Texas in Texas. It's a nonprofit organization that worked to um, uh, advance liberation of uh, LGBTQ people in Texas. And essentially, what I did was basically went to uh, 600 doors every week, um, discussing with conservatives um, the different. Uh, uh, the, the lack of protections for the LGBT community in Texas, yes. um, including like the in Texas, it's completely legal to be able to um, fire someone or evict someone or deny them services simply because of their um, sexual orientation or gender identity. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of we find that there are a lot of laws that are sort of in place for some other uh, agenda and that they're still kind of hanging around on the books sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, well, we got to figure this thing out. Uh, and until they get challenged, that yeah, becomes a problem. Let me ask you this, because this is what I've found. Um, 
uh, it seems that there are only two sides to this the, the the surgery discussion and the two sides are let whoever do whatever they want and the other side is I am a bigot and that's <laughs> that's what they're they've grouped you into because I I wanted to have a, a, a more open conversation and I've tried to have it with people in this industry outside of this industry and what happens is if you say maybe surgery isn't the solution then how that sounds is I don't want anyone to have sexual freedom. Yeah. So there's a very uh, clear middle area that is not being discussed, and I find that that's problematic. Because what do you it, think that that middle area is? Well, the middle area is um, to dismiss the discussion because you yourself don't feel that way never gets to the heart of the issue. Mm-hmm. Because not every person that, uh, that, 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 uh, wants to transition or that feels that they are uh, in this position with their sexuality might uh, want surgery to be the only other option there, there might be another you know there might be another option the other option might might be you know uh, dissolving gender as a whole yeah. and 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 being comfortable as a society with if you say that you're a woman then that has nothing to do with what we've done in in a medical facility mm-hmm. uh, so I think that's not ne- not that that's the healthier place, but that's I think that's the place of clarity. Yes. Is that um, if you're in a position where you feel that you were um, somehow you don't fit into the two t- two categories, I think that's the the issue. You don't fit into the two categories, then why should we think that this doctor is going to solve all of your problems? Yeah. As opposed to getting into the discussion and yeah. actually having the the conversation. And there there are like really three three kinds and it comes from a transgender person's perspective. There's um there's pre op and there's post op. Pre op yeah. meaning that they want to have um surgery. Yes. And then post op means that they've already had it. Yes. Um or had surgery and then there's non op, which is people who elect to not get surgery, right. whether it's for financial reasons or they just don't want to do it. Yeah, why does it yeah, why would it have to be for financial reasons first? This this is the for problem a lot of that people I have. It's for financial reasons because it costs like twenty thousand dollars sure. to do it. But this is the problem that I have. Why so then so for from your perspective, why is it necessary to be one of those? Basically, so it's not e- it's not even really three things. It's it's two things, and then a tiny other thing that's that's half of that thing is based in the other two. Does that make sense? So it's like two and a half things because you're saying it's a small well, percentage of people. Is, is people who decided they don't want it, right? At all for one reason or another, right. whatever that reason may be. And the, so let's remove financial then, so that we can actually that includes financial because there that is a reason why some people don't want it. It's sure, because they don't they can't afford it and they don't want it because they can't afford it. But for this discussion, let's remove financial because. Because in my because that's for me that's just pre-op extended extended I can right? see how you could how you could think of it like that but well I'm just saying for this discussion we, so yeah. we don't muddy the third mm-hmm. category which okay. is non-op okay. so from your perspective it, it does does non-op hold up in the same as the uh, as 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 post-op and pre-op um from in my in my personal perspective I value it all the same I don't think that. What is between my legs decides my gender. I know right. that I'm a woman, irrespective right. of what is between my legs. Um, but as a pers- personally for me, I'm pre-op because I do want to get surgery. Yes. Um, and as far as other people's decision, it's their bodies. Yes. So I'm not here to govern whether or not they're transgender or not because of what they want to do. Sure. So, but th- but then that's th- that's the part of the discussion that that becomes difficult because as I'm. I don't feel this way. I don't have uh, this this emotion, so mm-hmm. I can't speak on behalf of it. I think is what we're what we're doing. Well, I guess I could ask you hypothetically: How would you feel if you looked in the mirror and saw that you had a vagina every day? Like, you know right? What I mean, it's just the same thing. It's just like, how would you feel about that? And that's kind of um, if if you can get an idea of how that would feel for someone else, then that give you a sense of what it's well, like. So my my disconnect. And this is this is sort of like again, I, I also contemplate how if we don't have laws, then nobody kills anybody. So this is like you know I've 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 gone to the the sort of the six or seven levels above. My disconnect is this idea that if the two the two categories that that don't fit the person that's feeling this way uh, exist, then wouldn't it be problematic to try to then? jump into one of the two categories as opposed to say that no my category is a category and my category needs to be recognized 
But what category do you think would extend beyond like non-op or post-op or pre-op? Well, being born male, being born female, and being comfortable there. The third then category is being not comfortable there. So then we're trying to jump into one of the other two genders that we weren't Wait, assigned who, at birth. We? I'm, I'm getting kind of confused now. That's where I'm at. This is and this is where this is why the discussion gets confused. So if if you if you're acknowledging that trans is a third category. Of person, a person you said you said uh, it's as if I look in the mirror and I have a vagina and, I, and I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, why should I trust? It's some not a third category though. I an would outsider. Say, I would say it's 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 the second category. There's two. There's cisgender and then there's transgender. Sure, that's so fair. Two. But yeah. And so if you're cisgender, cis means that you identify as the same gender right. that you were assigned at birth, and transgender means you just. But identify those are two as things. Different. A gender that is different from the one that you were assigned at birth. Right. Okay. Fair. Okay. So we br- if we break it that way, which then can allow for a spectrum too. And and I and that's what I and that's what I believe in, and that's I think where the discussion uh, needs to open up to, as opposed to just go. Well, then just switch. I think going then just switch. It doesn't so solve the problem. Right. It's not male female binary. I right. Don't, I don't believe. I don't believe in that. And that's how I feel, and I and I think that's where we're muddying the category. Yeah. And because. You understand, and trans people will understand that that there will always be a complexity to trying to reassign, and you're never going to fully fit into that category. So let's open the category. Well, I th- of conversation. I, th- I think I think you're right, but I think that the the conversation is more. I think it's clear clarified by the distinction between transgender and cisgender, and recognizing that transgender does include the or does allow for the people to lie on a spectrum. Yes, it's just that so so long as they don't identify as the gender they were assigned at birth is the key aspect of that okay. transition, that trans portion of the word um, transgender, and then also that those who decide to not be on that n- to be on that um, spectrum. Those people can, you know, be all different flavors and everything. Sure. And what were you just saying at the very end? That I was, that's actually was the first point I was going to say. What were you just saying right before I said that? Well, I'm st- I'm still I'm still stuck. I'm I'm where oh, you yeah, where the, the spectrum is, is, is cisgender and transgender. That's yeah. the important distinction. Yeah. And I think that like it's so long as we understand that distinction, then it clarifies it all. Yes. And I don't think a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. again, and it's a very I think it's a much more sophisticated conversation to start talking about the the you know the the spectrum i think right now because it's kind of a first introduction to, yes. to transgender no i'll agree with that, that people it's just a lot simpler but it of an doesn't mean that we shouldn't have the conversation certainly and now that we've limited it to this to the to the uh i don't know let's let's call it the more uh uh less sophisticated version of the conversation mm-hmm. then we're skipping a step are we aren't we I don't think we're skipping a step because it still acknowledges them. Sure. It still acknowledges their existence. It's just it's just to say that, you know, if people want to originally think of transgender as male to female, that sort of thing, then at least they're grasping on the concepts at the first place. But so long as th- they understand the definition of it, it's yes. inclusive of their pe- people belonging to a spectrum. Okay, know? that's fair. But, uh, but m- again, my point is that the new argument has become... Uh, either I'm a bigot or I am dismissive, and okay. it's neither one is getting like to the complexity. Like cisgender people are either bigots or dismissive. No, if you if you t- either side of the argument, the first side of the argument is nobody should be able to have surgery. That's okay. like that what the people think is, is side A, mm-hmm. and they think side B is it's not me. Let them do whatever they want. Okay. Whoever let whoever do whatever they want with their body, mm-hmm. and both of those sides are dismissive Why because that? because to say I don't understand it. Do whatever you want mm-hmm. does is not a discussion. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. That's like when people like uh, think with racism. If you look at a white person, it's like I don't get it. I'm just not gonna think about it. I no, I don't, like I don't. I don't follow. Like if a, s- a white person that has never experienced racism or doesn't experience racism to the extent that say a color per- a person of color would, well they could be dismissive about it by saying that they don't understand what it's like to ha- to have to. You know, to experience racism. Right. So, so let's not even talk yeah, about so let's it. Let's not even talk about right. it. Right. Yeah, right. And I that's how I. F- that's what I feel is happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is is and it's, it's also an uncomfortable it's getting issue. Brushed so under the rug. A lot of people don't like to talk about it. I make it a point to every single time I'm on a plane, I tell the person next to me that I'm transgender and yeah. that I'm a porn star because I want them to know those things so that they can put a face to those to those labels. Sure. Because almost every single time they've told me I'm the first transgender person that they know, you know, that they know is transgender. And you know that that's, oh, that they know, sure. Yeah. Because and you they know that they're interacting with trans people. And they, yeah, exactly. And they have no and, idea. and I tell them that they're like, you know, for every firefighter you've seen, 
you've seen a transgender person. For every redhead you've seen, you've seen a transgender person. Yeah. Because that's a, that's a, our frequency. I don't know if the statistics are exactly the same it on it's those. It's about the firefighter? Mm-hmm. I don't know how many firefighters there are. Fi- oh, the these are real numbers? Like one in a thousand, I believe. Okay. Is the number. Yeah. <laughs> so very interesting. Okay, so firefighters and redheads. Mm-hmm. My brother's a redhead. And I and I and I and I and I. I'm play. not saying all firefighters and redheads are transgender. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say that. Fuck it. Um, no, but that's my point. Is 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 when we don't get to the 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 root of the discussion, we're 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 becoming, um, I don't know, uh, less tolerant of actually resolving any of these issues. Mm-hmm. And I think that's sort of the the, the problem. I agree, but uh, I, I the reason why I'm just so sh- so hesitant to like go too in depth with everyone about all the issues all at once is one because there's a lot of terminology that people need to like adjust themselves right. to in the first place to be able to engage in this conversation sure. intelligently. And I think that if we don't do that, if we don't kind of like keep it simple and then get more complex and just try to give everything all at once, yeah. I think that that's just too overwhelming. And I've had people tell me that the information I'm giving them is too overwhelming, and that's right. even the more generic expression of it and they are very quick and people are quick to just um like be dismissive or just like, tune out on things that they just don't understand yeah they're intimidated by it like right. all that is intimidating I, i'll be honest like for me it was intimidating sure to figure this out i had to learn this like uh oh, two years ago yeah where i started learning about all this stuff myself and uh, you know that was intimidating i was uh, looking at youtube videos trying to figure out what all these different words meant like gender right. dysphoria or what is it's transgender in the first place right. like what constitutes uh like what is a cisgender person like right never even heard the word cisgender before like two right. years ago yeah <laughs> yeah me as well uh and and this and this concept of of um pronoun and but again we uh, we have to be, you know we have to be in the discussion and mm-hmm. and i think the i think the one of the well I was gonna say one of the one of the clearer and 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 um, uh, well executed versions of 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 one of the discussions was actually a, a season ago in the show Shameless, mm-hmm. where one of the characters is a as a is a gay male and he meets an uh, transgender person and they and they start a relationship and then the transgender person has to basically walk this guy through. His sexuality, and I think they do they do an okay job of sort of um, spelling out some of the things and having this person literally. And it's just funny because it's the only way to almost make it work was was have a trans person then sit down and we have to watch him explain it to mm-hmm. uh, the other character. So it was just a uh, um, it was an interesting thing. But it is it's a, there's a there's a lack of information on the market and 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 in discussions. And I find that people just go. Yeah, that's let whoever much. do whatever. Yeah, like that's too much. Just let them do what they want to do. Right. And I hate that. It, it bothers me because, like, uh, like my first introduction to these sorts of discussions about, you know, social justice, um, and um, h- you know, individual rights and human rights and stuff came from a discussion about race as someone who's multiracial. Yeah. It's like my my introduction to these sorts of things seem to be about race because people tend to talk about race as the first yeah. discussion, th- you know, topic. And um, and you know, since then, you know, I've always think that I've always thought that those people who are so dismissive are not an ally. Like if you right. truly identify as an ally and are part of allyship, then it's a process. And one of the part of the process is, is that it l- requires a lot of learning and, and a lot of paying attention. And if you're not over there listening and you're not over there learning, then you're not a true ally in yeah. my opinion. Um, and this and is you're just as bad as everyone else who's against us because you're not doing anything for us. And this is how I, and this is how I feel. And that's why, and that's why as a curious person, as a person who is trying to gather information to be in the conversation, I've been grouped, uh, in into the opposite side of the argument that I feel because it, it is a it is a complex and we've created this, this two sides mm-hmm. and so I didn't I wasn't comfortable being shoved into the side where they were like well then if you don't think that the surgery and the thing and that they should be able to do and everybody should be able to do what they want and everybody should it's their body then you don't like gay people and you don't like trans people and you don't and it's like well that's not at all how I feel and it's like. So I felt, you know, overwhelmed in those types of conversations. So I think it is important to 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 be clear that this is a more complex conversation, and we're yeah. we're just we're not but we're just. I'm fucking confused. So do you do you disagree that people should be able to do? What no, my que- my my concern, my question, my uh, curiosity comes from sort of you know th- what you were saying, which is post op, uh, pre op, and uh, no op, and my. My concern is what uh, is is to have enough of a discu- uh, discussion about 
uh, the feelings of of no up. Mm -hmm. And again, that's what I'm trying to take. I'm just taking financial out for a second because I want to I want to have the conversation of people that um, want to have the conversation of of should we just dissolve the concept of 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 gender as a whole Mm -hmm. and it having nothing to do with uh, with a body part and having to do with with who humans are and who Mm -hmm. we are in our soul. So that's the and that's the hardest like that's the furthest part of the spectrum of the conversation, and uh, I'm having you're trouble like getting there. You're like in volume like four right now. Right, and I'm trying, and I'm having trouble getting mm-hmm. there. Yeah, because you're just trying to jump right into that, and I think that that's not going to ever work if you're trying to be right. practical with it. I think that that sort of that sounds like a utopian society. Right, one right. I, I w- no laws, no genders. Yeah. Kill, Genderless fuck, do it. Laws. I'll fucking kill whoever you want. Yeah, you know what I mean. And there's a morality to that. You're yeah, scaring me. <laughs> So I didn't mean to put those two together, <laughs> especially considering this issue and that f- people that have people have been killed over over mm-hmm. sexual issues for for forever. But yes, um, but the Continue but but the morality a- of humanity that w- that we're missing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so it is. So it is uh, what you pointing out um, intelligently that there is a complex. It is very complex, uh, and I think step that and I think to get that there. For now, I think that it's it's I think that it's actually necessary to acknowledge that transgender people just like how I think in the same with respect to like abortion and stuff with with you know with women it's like it's our bodies like it's what we want to do with our bodies isn't really up to other people's sure you know opinion and I think that it's important to have that opinion and I think that if you don't have that opinion then I do have a problem with you yeah but if you um if you have that opinion I think that's at least that's like the the the, the bare necessities but but you it's 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 not sufficient yeah. It's necessary, but it's insufficient. Well, here's um, where to be considered an ally, in my opinion. Here's where, here's necessary. what I fear, and this is the only thing that I fear, and this and then this is the problem is is it's uh, there's no example that will ever be good enough to encapsulate the way a trans person feels, right? So it's like any any version of of whatever thing that I that I wasn't born with that I feel like I should now have. Mm. I fear that. Once we start opening the doors, uh, that is, let everyone do whatever they want with their body, that we're we're going outside of sexuality and we're going into a position well, I'm talking where about transgender people and their right. bodies, and I'm right. seeking a specific issue. No, you like, are uh, specifically with transgender people for and sure. In the case with women with abortions and stuff, I'm not saying that like no, and I concede all these go, points you know, to you. Hurt themselves and and do things that would be, um, you know you know bad for them overall but right or this or just even s- as silly as like oh well uh i would have a a a, 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 a an athletic edge if mm. you know i removed a toe or wh- yeah. you know whatever silliness like that and that's the that's the worry that i have is once we once we dismiss the thing and then just let this this thing run and we're still trying to solve this discussion and 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 sexuality and all these things and then while that's happening mm. Yeah, but I, I'm also thinking that I don't, I don't see uh, a world where a lot of people are doing a whole lot of weird things to themselves, like yet, you know, sewing on a fifth arm or third arm or yet. something like that. Well, I there's mean, still so the just debate. Like, what's the impulse to do that? If well, there's the debate. There's a debate of of uh, of whether or not you would be more aerodynamically sound and and better uh, if you amputated both your legs and then became an Olympic runner. I mean, these we've had these debates in the past, and and there is a reality that that uh, we have gotten to a te- technological standpoint where, uh, I mean, then there are people, there are definitely people at Comic-Con that if they could cut off their arm and put a robotic arm on, they would do that. So like, and there's if they can afford to do it, then I don't <laughs> see why not. <laughs> okay. I well, mean, and that's where, and that's, it and that's what I'm afraid of. strange for me, but it's just like, that's not my body. Like, who yeah. am I to be like, no, they can't do that. If they want, if they have the money to do it, they want to do it. They're not hurting anyone. Then I'm I'm all for it. Like, <laughs> well, I'll ho- well, I'll hop out of the argument because that's that's sort of like that. Those are, those are both ends of the road, and we can't. You know <laughs> what I mean? We're not going to agree on those things. Uh, I don't think I don't think that we should ever be in a place where where we're giving people robotic arms. And that's so that's me coming from the lawless, anarchic type person over here. <laughs> right, yeah, right. We should just have no laws and stuff. But yeah, this one, but don't fucking have robotic mind. arms. I mean, I gotta. Say I think you're just scared <laughs> they're gonna like attack you with a robot. No, arm. I'm not. <laughs> No, that's not the issue. But so, so dead, dead there. So, AVN, <laughs> this is you. You said this is your first. It's my first. Um, what, what have you? Um, I don't know. What have you partaken in in Vegas outside of AVN? Outside of of of, uh, of introducing yourself mm-hmm. as a trans porn star to every person <laughs> you meet on the on the airplane. <laughs> on the airplane. What are you doing to like maintain sanity? Just just like have a balance in your life. Uh, 
see edibles. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Look, okay, let me ask you this, and so you're very knowledgeable all the things. So uh, there's a shaky line I thought on the, on the legality of of, of uh, marijuana in Las Vegas. Last time I was here, is it? Can I go? Can I go? So, is there a dispensary that I can go to in Vegas now? Are we fully I, legal? There's one that I can walk that I walk to every day. Okay, so fully <laughs> fully <laughs> legal. I was okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, <laughs> And then how do you find? And then how do you find you the the product it. here versus versus other places? Oh, good. It's on par. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's on par. It's a little dry. Yeah. But that it drier than I'm used to. Yeah. Because I'm more of a blunt person. Yeah. So well, it's also it's it's a very I didn't realize so this is my first time being in Vegas in winter and I was, I was looking at the temperatures and I was like okay and I tried to dress accordingly mm-hmm. but uh, it, it is a, it is a cold brisk uh, place in in the in the winter because it is so it is so dry. Yeah. It and is. my whole face is. Uh, chapped basically. I had, to, I had to oil my body. Yeah, and put on vi- Vaseline and everything. I caught. Yeah, I caught up too late. <laughs> I actually got some um some chapstick. Yeah. From the from the dispensary. Oh no that's shit. CBD chapstick. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Oh, so that's actually that that that's a whole other level of. of I love uh, it. It's the only way. I, only way I can get my man to wear chapstick. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> what, it on whatever day. way you have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I caught up too late. So I've been to. I. I really do like um, learning a city a little bit by, but not just taking cabs and whatnot. So I've been trying to take the bus for a couple of days, and so there's like a 20 minute gap sometimes between buses. And I'm just getting railed with wind, and like my nose and my lips are just falling apart. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm just trying to. Like I'm. I've. I. I took the damage, and now I'm just trying to catch up uh, to the. To to the dryness and I'm not I'm not I'm not doing a success a lot job. of water yeah that's what I also woke up dehydrated I woke up yeah so thirsty in the middle of the night we do find we do find it when, when we get busy like this we find like the even just doing the the simplest things like drinking water mm-hmm. becomes like a challenge mm-hmm. uh, so what's the what's the rest of the weekend so you have uh, there's AVN awards tonight are you, yes, are you participating awards, yes I'll be on the red carpet and very we'll cool the awards right after very cool and then I'm sure there's all these parties afterwards yeah so I don't have know you, which one I'm have you been partying so I, far <laughs> I was going to go party last night with me Isabella and um, she disappeared and her phone died. Oh no shit. <laughs> but um I also like I had I had other plans yeah. too. So I was like it just went off and did my own thing. Yeah. Nice. But yeah. I'm I'm not much of a partier anymore. Okay. I used to do a lot of that yeah. when I was like seventeen to like twenty one. Yeah, like everything party, when party, yeah, party. when you're like in your early twenties and late teens, everything mm-hmm. is a novelty. See I had a fake at seventeen, so I was twenty one at seventeen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then by the time I was twenty one I was like twenty four or You're kinda like, like Yeah, you're just like I'm over I'm it. I'm like, yeah. It was interesting. yeah, I, I ended up in London uh before I turned twenty one and so I started drinking in London legally because it's eighteen. And then I came back, and then I like it was my twenty first birthday, and I was like, no, it's not. A, it's like it's not a big it's deal. Not as exciting. It's not anymore. like a thing now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my twenty first birthday though, I I went blackout drunk. Oh yeah, you have it to. Was at, it was at a bar. Oh, um, I still on did campus, that. And um, this dude was there. He was a friend of mine. He has a very popular dude. So yeah. a lot of people kept walking to the bar, and I was like, oh, Derek, finish your birthday, and it's like my birthday too. So they got me b- birthday shots. Too. Oh yeah. So I was trying to be shot to shot with him. I don't remember after shot like no. three. Um, after that, I just like just black out. I woke, yeah. up, I woke up in a bathroom and just yeah. like that wasn't mine. Right. Near throw up, that wasn't mine. Right. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, you got a better part. story than me. Yeah. That was the worst I remember part. I, I was planking outside of my loft and they wouldn't let me in there for like for like um like you know public safety reasons oh, or something. Wow. They thought I would go in the room and die. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So I had to sleep at. So they so they're like just go somewhere else and die. Seriously? Yeah. No, they yeah. weren't like that. Yeah. Wow. They interesting. Want a or something. Yeah. That's terrible. I was just planking on the floor. Like, See, like if there was down. no laws, there would be no law for you to not go to your... <laughs> See, exactly. It's my own place. I don't know why I couldn't go to my own place and die. Like, right, gosh. yeah. It is uh, it is it is it is a bit of a cleanup issue. It is. <laughs> it beats public intoxication, though. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Like the ticket. Yeah, I had I did have that experience. I had the uh, I, so I I met some uh, famous uh, sportscaster. So I hear we took many pictures. I lost the camera. I the only thing I remember from my twenty first birthday was um, and this I still envy this girl for this was was uh this is the last time I dated a girl who was like comfortable popping a squat and we we squatted next to each other and I, I peed off to the left and she peed off to the right <laughs> and it was and it was beautiful. I mean it was what? it was true love. It's oh it's hard, it is hard it's hard to meet I somebody. Sh- I tried that before. I was. Like aim in the middle. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was beautiful. And uh, and then I remember uh, I have this thing when I get totally it was in my 20s when I get totally wasted is uh, I'll be in the bathroom and I'm and I'm going to get sick. And I decide for some reason my my drunk body decides that where I'm going to vomit is not in the logical place like the toilet. I, mm-hmm. I, it's usually into the sink or the, the bathtub. Of course, the bathtub. So, so I remember this. So I remember so this poor gross. girl crying and, and, and trying to to, oh. to clean the bathtub with my vomit. That's so gross. Yeah, that's a removable shower heads that's yeah. where it's at yeah right yeah mm-hmm. you get it if it's got it's got multi-purposes you know you it's can clean up the puke clean up the puke and clean and you can clean your butthole mm-hmm. uh with ease there it's, you a, go. it's brilliant that's really what we should be talking about we should be talking about the two sides the the the, the stationary shower head people and the movable shower head people both. <laughs> yeah, that's the new that's the new wave, right? So you can have the you have the one oh, the here side. and the other side. Mm-hmm. I can never figure out the thing, and I always and I always turn the wrong knob at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah. I always turn the that knob and get hit right in the face as I'm trying to get <laughs> in the thing. You know what? You know what? Actually, the the greatest thing I've experienced in a while from a shower is the the place that I was staying on this trip has a um it has a thermometer. Oh no way! In the shower head. That's useful. It was, and I did, so I didn't know what what temperature I like having My a shower, shower at. So sensitive, like this. Yeah. Much of a difference no, between. And I had to. Yeah. And, and it and it went and it was uh, and it would go blue and then it would go orange and then it would go red. Because like 116 will melt your skin. Oh my God! No way can go up that high. And yeah, yeah. This was It'll the hottest shower I've ever experienced. It didn't melt my skin. It's the hotel it was, that you're at right now. No, no, it was an Airbnb. It's oh, okay. an Airbnb, oh. and I found that one 106. That's my that's my that's my shower time. 106 to 108 is my shower time. No way. Yeah. I wonder so, what mine is because I always have it really hot. Yeah, I usually like the hottest. I had no clue. I had no clue, but it, it was it was brilliant. And it was that kind of thing. It was literally like it would be 111, and I was like it was too much, and I would just touch the thing. Mm-hmm. Wait a second, have it have it cool down. But now I have to have this thing. That sounds so it's cool. A piece I of technology. That. That's it. It's, it's like the whole setup. Like, how do you? Can you just buy it separately? Or yeah, no, it's just a. Re- I don't know. It's a regular shower head, and then inside the shower head just had a number. Oh wow. Yeah. So I guess you have to buy the shower head. Yeah, you got to get the temp shower head. That's cool. I mean, you can. I guess you can go get a um, thermometer. Just a thermometer that you shove in like a uh, in like a pork, and you could do it that way. But that's not. I don't know. That's probably not the fastest way to do it. That doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> well, look, uh, wonderful talking to you. Uh, I mean, th- th- we really did touch on some things. You did, you did educate me in a way that um, helps me understand that that, I, that that me skipping steps maybe is the is is the wrong conversation to be having. And 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 now I kind of understand more where um, where I need to educate myself and 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 get up to speed in the argument. But that you know that goes to show that that all of us are sort of. Uh, ill-equipped for a lot of mm-hmm. discussions that we end up getting involved in and uh, and we should all try to be better we should not be the the inferior end of the democracy there um, you go. <laughs> uh, so how do they follow you online what's your favorite social media what um okay cool so um vous valentina mm-hmm. is vous vous is in vu mm-hmm. valentina that's my handle for twitter instagram um uh What's it called? Snapchat. I use Snapchat a whole lot. <laughs> Classmates.com. Pinterest. No, I also have um, an OnlyFans account, OnlyFans.com. Very cool. B-O-U-S Valentina. Pay for your porn, guys. This is uh, our, our PSA for the moment. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people are not educated on the idea that if you didn't pay for your porn in, in that an individual setting, that most likely your performer didn't get paid. So make sure you pay for your porn. Check out the OnlyFans. Sorry, sorry continue. Mm-hmm. OnlyFans.com slash B-O-U-S Valentina. And um, also, my personal website is valentina-mia.com. And also, you can just, like, Google me, and all my other stuff will pop up, too. So. And if you're on a plane, uh, have the discussion. Uh, get, <laughs> in, get into all the conversations. And uh, let's, let's implore people to, to, yeah, get out there and educate themselves and, and really um, try to evolve this discussion. Cause mostly because I want to get to level four. I want to get to volume four, and, and we're, we're so far behind. Yeah. And we really need to catch up on the discussion. Um, thank you so much, uh, guys. We are on iTunes. We are on Google Play. Whatever thing you found us on, we're on the other thing. We have some fun content today on YouTube. Check that out. Uh, we try to bring you excellent content whenever we can. We drop every Sunday. Porn Stars and People Podcast. Thank you so much to my guest, Valentina. Uh, I'm Dan Frigolet, the host. Thank you so much for listening, guys. <laughs>